Hello and welcome to this video on angles involving parallel lines. Now let's suppose we were to draw two parallel lines like this and remember we put a little arrow to say that they are parallel and let's say that we connected them with this line here. Can you see that if I marked an angle here and I sort of put my fingers here like that to match the angle, I could sort of shift my hand down like this and you can see I'd now be at this angle here but it's the same angle, look, there we go, I shift my hand down and we can see that is the same angle. And these are known as corresponding angles. So we say that corresponding angles are equal. Now if we do the same, we've got two parallel lines and we connect it with some other line. Now this angle here, you might just about be able to see is the same as this angle here, just because of a kind of certain symmetry about it. And you can see that we have this kind of Z shape like this. You've got this Z shape like this. So they're sometimes known as Z angles, but we actually call them alternate angles. So we say that alternate angles are equal. Now also, if we have two lines that cross like this, two straight lines, you can probably see that this angle here is the same as that angle there. And these are known as vertically opposite angles. You might think, well, why are we saying they're vertically opposite? Because they're not vertical. And vertically is just the adjective form of vertex. You can see this is a vertex here and you can see that these angles are opposite each other relative to this vertex. So we say they're vertically opposite. So vertically opposite angles are equal. Now there's one final type of pair of angles. If we have parallel lines again and we connect it with this adjoining line, then can you see that these two angles, they're not equal to each other, but they form a kind of C-type shape. So we sometimes call these two angles C angles. Now we know from earlier that this angle is equal to this angle, they are alternate angles. But we know that these two angles here add up to 180 degrees because they're on a straight line. And therefore we know that those two angles add up to 180. So that's A and that's B. We know that A plus B is equal to 180 degrees and we say that they're called co-interior angles. Co-interior angles and they're not equal, they sum to 180 degrees. Now let's use it to solve this initial problem here. We've got two parallel lines like this and we've got this adjoining line like this and then we want, we've got this angle here which we're told is 80 degrees and we want to find this angle here, x. Now, what is x going to be, and how would we justify that? Well, let's think about some of the other angles. We could, for example, find this angle here. So, do you remember that if we put our hand like that, and we shift our hand across, so that my thumb is initially on this parallel line, and then it's on this parallel line, that angle will be the same. So, that angle is 80 degrees. And then we know that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So x must be equal to 180 minus 80, which is equal to 100 degrees. And if we were asked to give reasons, we just quote the various things that we have here. So we could say that corresponding angles are equal. And we can also say that angles on a straight line sum to 180. We don't say angles on a straight line are 180. We say angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. So that would be sufficient reasoning about how we found x. Now let's use this to solve some of these other problems. We want to find x and or y in each case. If I just copy this out, two parallel lines, adjoining line, that's 60 degrees, that is y and that is x. Well, we can do our kind of shifty hand thing again. We put our hand like this, and we shift our hand until it's on the other parallel line. So that angle must be the same as that. They are corresponding angles. So we know that y is equal to 60 degrees. Now there's two ways we could get x. We could note that x is vertically opposite to y, so it's got to be the same, so that's also 60. Or we could also spot that we've got alternate angles here. Can you see that we have this Z shape here? And it doesn't matter that the Z is backwards, it's still kind of a Z shape. So you can see that those two angles must be the same. So X is 60 either way. Either by using alternate angles or by using corresponding angles and then vertically opposite angles. 
And by the way, the, the way I sort of spot the Z angles is, let's just say you have these two parallel lines, you've got this line here. If you were to highlight this connecting line here, the line that connects the two parallel lines, then from each end point, if we fire in opposite directions, so it could be this way and this way, or the opposite, so it could be this way and then the opposite way on the other side. Now, that still is sort of a Z. I know it's kind of like a stretched out Z, but it's still a Z. So that angle there between those two bold lines is equal to the angle between those two bold lines. So they are still alternate angles. Right, what about the next one? We've got a line here, two parallel lines. We've got 80 degrees here, and we've got X here. Well, again, we can take our hand and we can shift it to the next parallel line. So that angle X would be equal to 80 again, because corresponding angles are equal if we we're asked for justification. Now here's where they get a bit harder. We've got C here, I've got two parallel lines again, and I've got this isosceles triangle. And let's write some reasons as well why we get our various angles. We want to find X. Now, we've got two parallel lines here, so can we either find corresponding or alternate angles? Well, yes, we can. We can highlight this connecting line between the two parallel lines, and then we fire off in two opposite directions. So this is a Z here. So that angle must be 72 degrees. So we can say that alternate angles are equal. Now, this is an isosceles triangle, and we saw in a previous video that if we put our two fingers on those two marks, indicating those two lengths are the same, if we shift our fingers apart from each other, but in the same direction, we can see that our fingers end up on these two angles here. So that must also be 72 degrees, because these two angles are equal. And the reason for that is base angles of isosceles triangle are equal. And then we know that this angle we can get just by doing 180 minus these other two angles, because we know the three angles add up to 180. So if I just do 180 minus 2 times 72, we get 36 degrees. So this is 36 degrees. And then finally, that x there is just 180 minus 36, because angles on a straight line add up to 180. So we get x as 144. And if we wanted to write the reason, angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. There we go. And that's a complete set of reasons and justifications for all the angles that we found to eventually get x as 144 degrees. Now in this final problem, we want to find the angle of y. And we can see that this is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel sides. Now, can we use some property of parallel lines that we previously saw? Well, we've got a z here. We can see this z here involves that 30 degrees. And you can see that is a z. So that angle there between these two bold lines must be the same as this angle here between these two bold lines. So that angle is also 30 degrees. Now, that allows us to get this remaining angle in this triangle. So if we did 180 minus 30 minus 85, that gives us 65 degrees. So that angle there is 65 degrees. Now, do you remember from a previous video that opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal? So if that angle is 105 degrees, that angle is also 105 degrees. So we know that y is just 105 minus the 65 and that gives us a solution of 40 degrees.